Hello, uh, social media uh, audience. Uh, my name is David Keguro of Keguro and Associates. Um, I, I am the lead auditor uh, here. We do uh, audit and assurance, and also we do risk management, including uh, business uh, advisory services. Um, we are here to partner with uh, Tari Solutions. So we are going to answer the questions that you are giving us and we believe and hope that they will help you change your mindset and have new business ways in which you excel as we also partner with you in terms of helping you with risk management, uh, audit and assurance, and from the other side, Tari Solutions will give you softwares that can help you manage your business in terms of accounting, in terms of financial management and the related services. Welcome. 31,000, which I like so much, uh, not to say that it's the best, but uh, I, I, I normally like the way it uh, defines risk. It says risk is uncertainty or effect of uncertainty on objectives. And you will realize here that they are talking of effect and they are talking about uncertainty and they are talking about objectives. Those are the three things that define risk. One is that you have to have objectives for you to be able to say you are managing risk. You cannot manage risk without an objective. And when you are managing uh, risk, you realize that now, you are, because you are not in a vacuum, there are things that will come and affect you. And there's something we call the risk meta language. And the risk meta language is that there has to be a cause and there has to be an effect and there has to be an impact. Those three things we call the risk meta language. They define what risk management is. And um, people have asked, who is to do risk management? And my answer is that everybody needs to do risk management, including personal lives. I mean, when we cross our doors in the evening, we are managing risk because an a certain event can come at night. That's risk management. When we are crossing the road, we don't cross our eyes and cross the road. We have to look right, look left, look right again, and cross quickly. That is risk management, because you are looking at an event that can happen and you want to mitigate. I normally like um, uh, uh, um, seeing risk management as a process in which by uh, you can ask yourself some questions and that will help you define risk. One is, what am I trying to do? Because you cannot manage risk without knowing what you are trying to do. What am I trying to achieve? That is setting my objectives. And then when I set my objectives, I'm to ask myself, what can affect me? There are a host of things that can affect you. In the universe, there will be so many risks that can affect somebody. Some can, some can't. And when we have those uh, things that can affect me, and that is risk identification. You have to identify risks. And because you have millions and millions of risks, do you want to address them? Resources and time can't allow. So we get into what we say. You have to ask yourself, which are the big ones? And you address the big ones uh, uh, so because they'll affect you most. And that is what we call risk uh, 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 analysis. You want to analyze what is this big risk? What is its likelihood? What is the impact that it can give me? The big ones are, what can I do about them? Yes, the risks are there. Do I sit and wait? No. You have to do what we call a uh, risk control. And uh, once you do the risk control, uh, you will find that more things will come because risks are so dynamic. Today, this risk is coming. Tomorrow, another one is coming. Another one is changing, like we are hearing about the COVID. There's COVID strain today. Tomorrow, there's another strain that comes in. Those are risks that are trying to re-engineer themselves into other forms. And once we have decided what are you going to do uh, about those risks, you don't do risks and keep quiet. You have to say, did it work? And that is what we call the risk review. You have to do reviews and see whether those risks are, are really managed. And also, we don't do risks to cross them in a box. We do risks to communicate. Whom do I need to communicate to? Like if you have a board of directors, if you have a risk committee, they are very interested into knowing what happened. The stakeholders, 
we have various stakeholders which are interested in uh, what we are doing. And stakeholders could be suppliers, could be uh, um, uh, the government, regulators, could be all sorts of people who are interested or perceive to be affected by what you are doing. So uh, all that now brings in into the issue that risk management is a core function within the business that you are doing. And another sometimes back said, then if you are not in risk management, what well, doesn't matter which business you are in, the business you are doing is risky. What are some of the recommended ways of identifying risk in a business? Remember, we have said that risk is a process. Starts with what do, you want, what do I want to do, risk uh, objectives, and then what can affect me. That is what we call risk identification. And how do we do risk identification? Remember, risk is about something we know that can happen. We rightly know that it can happen, but we have not identified it. So uh, the risk identification is very important because you cannot manage what you have not identified. And people normally ask, what is this risk identification and how does it come about? Let's start with our personal life. Uh, when I was coming to work today, I knew yesterday that I have an objective of coming to Kigura and Associates. And when I, was, I woke up in the morning, I had to identify what are the risks that can, I can find on the way. One of the risks is that there could be traffic. And what is the result of traffic? I'll be late for this um, kind of a, a program I'm doing. Uh, and that is risk that I identified individually. So there are risks that you need to identify individually, and there are risks that you need to identify as groups. And these uh, um, uh, risks that we identify as a group is now where you find organizations coming in to try and understand and identify their risks. So uh, our, our, uh, this person is asking, which ways are there to identify risk? Uh, I would say, and I would want to classify this into three. One is that you can identify risk based on past things that has happened. If we have known that um, there has always been uh, accidents near the railway crossing, those are events that has happened and they can help us identify that at that crossing there is a risk that somebody might be hit. That is about the past. It can also be the past uh, history of the company. How, how has staff been uh, the absenteeism, for example? Is there a risk that we won't be able to achieve our objectives today because the key staff didn't report to work today, maybe because of COVID or something like that? That is identifying risk based on past performances. And we can also identify risk with the current situations we are in. I'm imagining in a factory whereby um, uh, there's a machine that is running and uh, the, 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 the floor supervisor hears that there's a certain noise that uh, he has not heard before. That is something that is currently happening and it is a sign that a risk is coming. Which risk? Stoppages. The machine might break down and stop. So he will say, currently we are experiencing this and we need to take action. That is risk identification based on the current uh, situations we are in. Yet, there could be others whereby we look at risk identification based on futuristic uh, uh, predictions. And we can say, okay, uh, we want to increase our sales from 10 billion to 50 billion. We are looking ahead. What can we be able to do? What are the risks that can prevent us from achieving that objective? That is now forecasting. And we have tools that can be used for forecasting. We have the, 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 the simulation Monte Carlo. We have decision trees. We have uh, 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 scenario analysis. There are so many that can be used to identify risk. So the issue of risk identification is uh, 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 a way in which you want to say, yes, we have an objective here. And we have realized, we have identified that these are the risks that can come our way and prevent us from achieving uh, our objectives. Remember, risk is affecting objectives. Uh, uh, so uh, identifying it, meaning that you have to identify what can affect risk 
so that you are able to achieve your objectives. There is no organization that does not have objectives. And this is why risk management has become so important. You have strategic goals. You will have strategic risks. You have financial goals. You have financial risks. Uh, you have financial risks. You have uh, um, uh, operation goals. You will have operational risks. Then identifying risks become, risks become uh, critical. And um, one of the most, and not, I'm not saying they are the best because there will be various of them. One of the best ways that organizations will use to identify their risks, they will have brainstorming sessions. They'll have people picked from departments and they will sit and try and analyze how, what is the risks that can affect us. And they will now discuss them and, and, and agree on them. There are others like the Delhi uh, uh, technique whereby people are given uh, um, chances to individually to see get what risks are there, then they'll come together and uh, address them. There are also uh, checklists which people can fill, uh, somebody can be interviewed and staff can be interviewed and they will give uh, um, identity to the risks that could be there. So uh, risk identification is a very critical process. It also uh, determines what happens thereafter after it has been identified. We have another question here which says, hi, I have a boutique in a good location, but lately the sales have, have been uh, uh, decreasing. I noted that most of my customers have been buying from online shops. Is there a way you, uh, you can identify such challenges before they arise and how can I deal with this? Again, we go back to risk identification and um, I like this because uh, this person has identified some things here. One, he's saying that he understands in which, which business he is, he is in, uh, maybe he, let's assume he's a he, uh, he is in a boutique and he's in a good location and he has been making sales before. And now where he is, he has noticed something that is happening. Despite having, understanding the business he, he is in and being in a good location, and sales were doing good, something has come, a risk that customer risk is reducing. And we have said that risks are dynamic. The risks that we had in 1974, they are not the same risks that we have in 2021. The risks that we are having in 2021, they are not the same risks that we'll have in 2050. The nature of risks is that some will come and uh, change, they come in a new way. Some will expire uh, because if we were doing a project and the project was to make a bridge, once we finalize that bridge, the risks expire. We don't have them in any other time. Some risks will be primary and they will carry with themselves secondary risks. You, uh, you, identify, you, you, you manage the, the primary risk, but you find it has left itself a child called a secondary risk. And uh, when we have that, this kind of things, a question triggers in our mind. Because we have seen that uh, the business uh, environment is dynamic, including the risk. What are we going to do? And luckily enough, risk management is a wide discipline. It had realized this, and they brought something they call business continuity planning. And business continuity planning is whereby uh, before an event happens, you are able to analyze and say, what if this happened? What am I going to do? And we saw this in our country. There are some institutions that when COVID came, they closed completely. And we have some that when COVID came, COVID was announced in China sometimes back uh, in 2019. And immediately, they went into action and started saying what can affect us. They started planning and you find they were able to sell through. And uh, uh, I can quote um, an incident or, or Arthur, uh, something that happened, whereby we had a school somewhere and the school closed. They went back and sat, the head teacher, the principal, the teachers, they sat down and said, are we going to sit and wait for things to go us? And they said, we have classrooms. We have teachers here. We have the land here. Why don't we do a great business that can sustain us when this disruption is there, we do this. And maybe when the disruption is over, we go back to our core process and they were able to sell through. 
That is business continuity planning. You are saying that this thing can happen and uh, before it happen, let me plan. And business continuity planning also incorporates things when those happen. And that we call it uh, uh, business recovery programs or business recovery uh, uh, plans. You have said that um, COVID has come, the schools have closed, and everybody is out there. What am I going to do? We need to bounce back. We call it resilience. How am I going to bounce back to where I was? Those are the business recovery programs. And also, you'll find that business uh, continuity will involve business impact analysis. And there, here you are asking yourself, if this thing happens, what is the impact? Is it going to hit me hard such that waking up again, I cannot be able to do or to, to, to be able to be on track again? All those things are the ones now you see uh, our, 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 our person here asking that I have been into business. It was working well. Something has come and he's identifying it as online shops. The online shops are coming and they are picking everything. What are you going to do? This world is dynamic. You cannot um, um, uh, be doing the business like in 1974. I remember when we were young, uh, when budget was about to be read, the shopkeepers will hide sugar because they, are, was, they were so sure that the price will increase. These days, let us have a, 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 a shopkeeper hiding uh, sugar that because the budget is being read. He'll go into losses. So that is to say the risks uh, that we are having today are not the risks that we'll have tomorrow. The business processes that we are having today are not the same businesses that you are having uh, uh, tomorrow. So uh, this person, what are you supposed to do? You have to sit down, look at your business continuity possibilities. And one of these is understand your customers. Remember, it is not you driving the customers. It is customers driving you. So you have to look at their taste. What is the paradigm shift of the people you are selling your, uh, your, your clothes to? Is it old mamas in the village? Is it celebs in the town? Is it young people who, are, who want to have uh, the modern clothes that they are having? Once you have identified these customers that you are serving, uh, are, they, are, 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 they are they technologically um, um, uh, okay? Are they people who are able to use their gadgets? Like for example myself, there are things I will no longer go to look for. A phone cover, a Bluetooth speaker. I will just go Google, ask, and it will be brought here. So uh, this person who has a boutique is the high time. You have to sit and do your business planning. You have to know that it is no longer uh, walk-ins. You identify how am I going to do online business if that is how it is going. Because you have identified that your customers are being swallowed by online shops. It means then, because you are in the same industry, technology is telling you that stop waiting for people, go out there, create um, apps, or do whatever you are going to do or, or come out with another uh, method, business method, that will counteract these people going online. So um, what I would suggest is that uh, identify your customers, look at where, where they are going on the other side, uh, look at your business, understand them, and then um, maybe you go into consult consulting out there, get the apps people, see what competitors are doing, and have uh, a, a new way of doing things. Remember, once you go through the business continuity programs, uh, you'll be able to uh, be on top of uh, things, but don't stay waiting for working uh, people. Those are historical. We had to start a business that will involve importing goods, and in particular spare parts, and selling them rockery. What are some of the risk mitigation strategies should I consider? I think you are starting it the wrong way because you want to control something that you have not identified, something that you have not 
really known whether it's going to affect you and how big will it be to have an impact in you, into your new business and you want to control it. I would suggest that um, risk management, you start with your objectives. And I can see you have an objective here, which is importing goods um, and this in particular spare parts. You have identified your market, which is selling them locally. So you have an objective, which is importing and selling locally. The th thing you have to ask yourself, or the, uh, the, the questions you have to ask, ask yourself, what can affect me in the importation process? How reliable is the supplier on the other side? Am I going to be st within stock outs? What is the read time? How long does it take for a ship to come from China to Kenya? Are the goods going to be, uh, uh, to be held by customs? When they come in here, how am I going to deal with customers uh, that don't know me? So all those are risks that can happen. So I would suggest even before going to control, to mitigating these risks, you are going to identify what can affect you when you are importing these goods. And um, because you have asked what are the mitigation strategies, assuming that you have done risk identification, you have done risk assessment, and risk assessment will involve risk identification, risk analysis, and risk evaluation. Uh, then you have come to the risk mitigation strategies. Risk mitigation strategies um, is to say that there is a risk already here and I can feel that it can come any minute. What am I going to do? And there are various ways into which you can do uh, mitigate risk. One is that you can avoid it. And how do you avoid risk? Is not importing those goods and saying I am not going to do the importation business. So the risks that are there, foreign exchange risks, um, the, uh, the, the fraud risks that can happen on the way, uh, the counterfeit goods that can be surprised, surprised to you and you ask for original ones, all those risks you will not have them. That is avoiding risk. And the second one, in which I believe most people are, is accepting the risk and saying that let that risk come and when it comes I'll deal with it, a very unfortunate uh, thing to do. And we say that if something happens the first time, we might understand somebody. If it, is, if it happens the second time, it is unfortunate. If it happens the third time, it's unac unacceptable. So um, the risk mitigation uh, strategies also go that way and the other one that you can be able to do is you there's a risk here and I want to face it now that is the risk treatment you want to use your risk um, uh, knowledge the risk strategies that are there to reduce it to manage our levels another way you can do uh, risk mitigation you can say now um, this risk is too big for me. I cannot be able to handle it. You can do what we call risk transfer. And risk transfer is, for example, when I'm, uh, I have my vehicle, um, that, ve that vehicle can have an accident and the impact can be very huge. So what am I going to do? I'll transfer the risk to somebody else. That is the insurance company. I'll tell them, oh, okay, there's a risk here. I cannot handle it. You just uh, take care of it. I pay you premium. All those are risk mitigation strategies, and you find they also um, go hand in hand with the opposite of, of that. Remember, we defined risk as effect of uncertainty on objectives. There is nowhere that the, 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 the definition is saying that a bad risk. If you go to town and ask a person along the street, do you want risk? They'll tell you, no, 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 I don't want risk. But in terms of the risk uh, uh, management, we say risk is two-sided. We have risk uh, that is bad, which call threats, and we have risks that are good, which call them opportunities. 
and for example, when you have a, a, a risk that you want to, uh, uh, to avoid, you can, you, you, you can try and enhance it instead of um, uh, uh, avoiding it and it is an opportunity, you enhance it. You can have a risk that is too uh, big for you and it's a good one. You can share it with somebody else and say, come, we form a joint venture. So risks have the bad side and they have a good side also. So um, when you are doing uh, your risks, you also have to understand that. Uh, uh, and also uh, in terms of risk, because it is control, you realize that uh, we, there are various control strategies that you can use. One is preventive controls. And preventive is um, proactive in nature. Because uh, you are trying to prevent something from happening before it happens. Let's give an example of uh, uh, a fire, in, uh, the fire, the fire preven prevention control. People normally go to buildings and when they see the fire, the fire extinguisher, they will think that is a fire prevention uh, strategy. No, 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 no. The, all of the fire detectors, in, on, when you go to a, an, an airplane, you'll see them, the plane is fitted with uh, uh, smoke detectors. Those are reactive. When you have fire extinguishers, it means they can only be used when the fire is there. But if you want to have a fire preventive control, you have to do things like checking, are the wires okay? Did somebody switch off all the kitchen rights? Were all the gadgets put off? Those are now preventive controls. They are proactive and they happen before the event is there. Then we have uh, corrective controls. And corrective controls, they can be proactive and they can be detective. Uh, if there is a, a history of a machine uh, that has pulleys and the pulley lasts for three years, each year you find after three years you have to replace it. After three years, you have to replace it. So as a proactive measure, you know by the time you are going to the third year, you need to replace, you need to correct that. That is proactive. You can also correct as a reactive because the event has happened, the puri has gone off, it is worn off, and it can no longer work. Then as a reaction, you can be able to replace it. And you also find that there are also other control we call directive controls. And these directive controls, they can also be proactive and they can also be uh, uh, reactive. Um, if, for example, we have staff that are reporting to work and we tell them our customers come here at 7 a.m. and um, uh, they, they need their products by 7.15. So as a directive control, I'm going to tell staff that by before seven, everybody should be here ready to work. It's a proactive, yes? And also it can be reactive. I can come and find it is 7.05 and the staff uh, have not arrived. I'll start calling them all over sending Uber to pick them. Yes, I'm trying to direct, but it is reactive. So that's another way in which we can have um, uh, controls in terms of risk mitigation. We can also have uh, detective controls, and detective controls are reactive. Those are things that you detect, um, and you detect them after they have happened. The person who was asking about now the, the, the risk mitigation, this is a control that you're doing. But what I would advise is, first, uh, have your objective, do your risk analysis, and then do your risk mitigation strategies. But I am so happy for this question because um, already he has realized that there's something that can affect him and he needs to control it. Another question here uh, coming up and it's asking, Hi, I have noted that during the pandemic, I believe this is COVID-19, most of my customers are not able to pay upfront all on time. What is your advice on credit risk? Uh, a credit risk simply is somebody uh, or, or rather a situation whereby there was a contract between 
uh, one person with another, whether written or orally. And this person was supposed to do an obligation. And this person has failed to honor that obligation. So uh, that is the risk that we call the credit risk. Mostly you find the credit risk is one of the major risks that you have in the financial institutions where you have heard about bad loans, you have heard about uh, people, people um, securing loans and they have not been able to pay. It is one of the biggest things and biggest risks that banks cannot sleep without even addressing. Uh, but I believe this person is asking about credit risk in terms of the normal buying and selling. And because of the economic situations in which we are in, uh, you find that uh, the customers are not being able to pay and he has been providing uh, these goods on credit. Um, about risk management is trying to get what is this that is affecting your objective. The objective of this person is to sell and have cash. But in an attempt to do that, there is a strategy that he was using by giving goods on credit. But now a risk which was not there, or if, well, maybe it was not a major risk, it has come now in a big way. And this person will need to do something. Other is then he's going to be out of business. There's something in our financial management we call the cash conversion cycle. And the cash conversion cycle is when I remove my money to go and buy some materials, put them into a production process, then I have a finished good, and then that, that product I sell it, and if I sell it on credit, that person pays me, so that when I receive that money, I put it back into buying raw materials. That cash conversion cycle is very important, because if there is a break in any one of them, it is going to affect the whole process. Imagine now that I have bought uh, the product, I have, I have manufactured the product, they are in my store, and they are taking two years to sell. That, that now affects my cash conversion cycle because I have no cash to be able to put back into business because it is tied in the product. So in this case, we have our person here who has goods that he has bought, and has subjected them into the uh, sales process. But in his cash conversion cycle, you will find that the credit, the days in which the customers are staying with his money has really affected his cash, con his cash conversion cycle. Then the thing to do here is to say, what am I going to do? And a simple question to ask yourself, which is best? Is it me with my money? Or is it when I have my money with somebody else? Of course, it is when I have my money. It doesn't matter the huge sales that you make on credit and you're not being paid. So the strategy that you're going to use is, number one, you have to understand your customers. They are good ones. They are those who are not being able to pay you. Then also look at your strategy. The strategy that I'm using about selling goods on credit. Are my products good enough to command a cash payment? What is the premium of your products? Are you selling goods that are sold by Tom, Dick and Harry? Analyze your products and see how is it that my products have demand. And if your products have demand, then you'll find that you can add a premium and you can be able to ask for cash payment. I won't advocate for you to press selling on credit because you'll soon be out of credit, out, out of business. And when I'm doing, for example, audits out there, you will find that um, uh, 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 somebody is having uh, a good profit, uh, somebody is having um, uh, um, uh, good sales, but you find that person is operating on an overdraft. But when you look at their, uh, credit, uh, their, their customer's list, it is so big. Meaning that that person has gone to the bank, has borrowed to finance his customers, which is not right. So you have to understand your cash 
conversion cycle. It is not about profitability because you sell at, you sell on credit, you'll make a profit, but you will be out of cash. Remember, profitability is different from liquidity. You have to balance both of them. Other question is, do all businesses require risk management strategies? He further says, I own an office equipment business. As a supplier, what are some of the risk measure, measures that I should put in place? The way I would want to ask, I mean, or rather to answer this question is going back to the originality of risk management. And the origin of risk is what am I trying to do? What, what objective do I want to achieve? And we said before that anywhere there is an objective, there is a risk. And this person is asking, uh, uh, is risk management for any business? And I'm telling the, uh, him that so long as there is an objective, it doesn't matter the size of the business. Risk management has to be there. And risk management, we, we, manage, we manage even risk without knowing. Um, when, we, uh, when we go to our homes and we are cooking maybe tea and the tea is boiling and we want to remove the tea from the fire, we don't just go and hold that tea, uh, that teapot with our hands because we'll get scalded. What we are going to do is pick a piece of cloth and hold with it and remove it. You are doing the risk management. There is a cause which could be uh, the, the boiling tea and there could be effect of getting uh, scalded and there could be effect, uh, there could be an impact of the injury. So you find that we are doing risk management even without, without knowing that we are in it. The only thing uh, that uh, differs is the degree and the formality of it. So a risk so long as there is an, a, an objective, whether it is personal risk, whether it is an organizational risk, whether it is a government risk, so long as there is an objective, risk management has to be there. And you had asked that uh, you have an office equipment business and you are a supplier. What triggers in my mind is that then you are in what we call a value chain you are receiving these goods from a supplier and you are now onward delivering them to customers. There's a value chain. And you, you, the risks that you could face here are the risks that we call the value chain risks. Remember that your supplier is, um, in your relationship with the supplier, there are risks. How guaranteed are you that you'll not receive counterfeit equipment? Are you sure that this uh, supplier will not get rich in supplying you with the products? Those are risks in the value chain. What about when you get the goods? Where are you storing them? Will they get, uh, uh, will the rooms flood? Will there be bulgari and people will come and steal them? Will they break when they are being delivered to the customer? Those are now the risks that are within you. And also, you are going to forward them to somebody else. What are the risks that you as the, 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 the supplier of those uh, items to the customers, what are risks are, are you going to face? The customer can refuse to take the product and say, this is not what I wanted. The, uh, the customers cannot, maybe will not pay you. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, 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 the vehicle can roll down, God forbid, and all the products are broken. So you find there is a value chain and what you need to do is to look at the value chain risks that you can have. And once you look at the value chain risks, you have to analyze from the inputs you are having from your supplier. It could be products, it could be a service. Then how you bring them into your process, the core processes that you're having. And then how are you going to give them out? And don't forget that in risk management, there are internal um, uh, risks, risks that can happen and there are external risks that can happen. The risks, for example, you don't know whether the government will put a registration 
that this product cannot be sold henceforth. And we saw that with the polythene papers. Uh, people had invested into business uh, uh, that were manufacturing uh, uh, some kind of uh, polythene papers. And the government said that these products will no longer be used. And we find that now uh, they were in losses. So when you are analyzing your business uh, strategies or value chain uh, strategies, these are the things that you need to, to understand. That there are external forces or external stakeholders and there could be internal stakeholders. Understand your core process, understand what you are receiving, understand what you are giving out, and analyze and describe the risks that can come out. There's another question here um, that is asking about, or it says, I understand that insurance for one's business helps manage some basic risks. What type of insurance do you suggest is good to have for retail <laughs> business? Now, um, this is what we call risk transfer. Uh, you, you, have, um, you have identified that there is a risk that can affect you and you have realized that the risk uh, could be maybe too big for you and you, can, you want somebody else to help you in terms of uh, mitigating that risk. When we come to, um, and it is one of the risk options that you have, the 40s, you can, you can, you can, uh, you can terminate you can transfer, you can treat, uh, all those uh, the, uh, are risk strategies. So this is risk transfer. I want to transfer this risk to somebody else. Um, when we are doing um, uh, risk management, we, want, we, 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 we like doing uh, this uh, in terms of a, a, like an option. Because there are several options you can do before even you go for insurance. What are the things I need to do uh, so that what I'm taking to the insurance is maybe the residual. Uh, there are some things that uh, you can do to ensure that even maybe your premiums come down because the other person is carrying the risk for you. And remember, when you transfer risk, you don't transfer all the risks to that person. Let me give you an example. Um, you might be uh, doing um, a school and you say that uh, I'm, I'm having small children here and um, accidents can happen. And what you do is that you have an insurance that if an accident happens, the insurance is going to compensate. But have you transferred the reputation of that school? Because people out there will say that is the school that does not take care of their children, one child drowned in their swimming pool. Even though the insurance is going to compensate, the reputation is already damaged. So uh, insurance is an option whereby it is one of the strategies that you need to do in terms of risk control. And um, um, suggesting an insurance that is best for a business, that is not possible. Because different businesses we require different uh, 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 insurance uh, um, uh, arrangements. If a company is dealing with cash and they are transporting that cash from the office to, to, the, to the bank, they might want a, an insurance and uh, that insurance will cover cash in transit. If we are doing a business that is just supply of items, and money is paid through wire, um, uh, wire, wire transfer, we don't need to do cash trans insurance on cash transit. We just need to do maybe an insurance of, um, um, against cybercrime, for example, because you are in online business. So um, there is no specific insurance that we would want to say uh, it is an all-inclusive that will help a business. And remember, it is one of the options that we have in terms of risk control. And uh, you only do a risk transfer when you realize that maybe uh, the impact is high and the likelihood of it is low. So it goes like that, that you, the, the likelihood of this event happening is low, but the impact can be very high. Like even driving, we transfer the risk to insurance companies because the likelihood of an accident happening is low but uh, the impact could be high. So the best option is to transfer it. Or you can say that um, there's 
somebody who has tied a rope between the Times Tower and the KICC. And he has kept a, a, a good amount of money on the other side. And he tells uh, the people in town, whoever crosses that rope between the two buildings, this two billion is for you. And what is about uh, likelihood and the impact? It's so certain that if I attempt to cross that rope, I'm going to fall. So the likelihood is almost certain. And what will be the impact? The impact is so high. So the likelihood is very high. The impact is very high. What is the risk um, uh, mitigation strategy am I going to use is to prevent that from happening, to terminate it. I don't want it. So that's a strategy. So the person asking about insurance company, remember you do insurance when the likelihood is low, but the impact can be high, and there is no a general kind of an insurance that fits all. It depends with the, the, the way you are doing your business and the, the kind of uh, risks that you are, uh, you are having and to the extent you want to transfer that risk to another person. I have another question here that is asking about uh, what kind of risks should I be uh, assessing before starting my manufacturing business? Um, <laughs> this person is understanding there is a risk and already he wants to do risk assessment and I would want to repeat again what is the risk management process it is uh, about identity uh, um, uh, it's about um, uh, establishing the objectives what do you want to do it is about a uh, risk assessment the one he's talking about here which is about risk identification uh, risk analysis and risk evaluation it is about uh, uh, risk mitigation, which is how am I going to control that risk. It's about risk communication, whom am I going to tell uh, that risk, this risk exists. It's about risk review, how, 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 how wrong will this risk be with us? Is it going to come in another way? And it's about um, uh, change. What are the changes that happen in risk management? So um, this person is asking, what kind of risks sh should he be assessing when he's doing a manufacturing business? You know, there's something we call the risk universe. And the risk universe is all risks that you can find out there, including a plane falling from sky, the sky and coming to your manufacturing business, which you had no even idea that a helicopter will be passing there and it crashes into your business, God forbid. So um, it is about now identifying what you are doing and looking at the risks that affect you and which are the big ones and in terms of likelihood and impact. Uh, so um, uh, this calls for you trying to identify risks and classifying those risks. You know, there's what we call risk classification. And how do you classify risks? You can classify risk in terms of where they come from. Where is the source of the risk? If somebody is doing manufacturing, for example, and one of the risks that you might, be, uh, you, you might have in manufacturing is the supplier getting rid in providing you with raw materials. That's a risk because you cannot manufacture. Another risk is that um, uh, you can have uh, the supervisor who understands the formula doesn't report to work or he has been poached by, 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 by uh, he has been poached by a, a competitor. What about um, uh, the, 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 the issue of machines? How are you sure that the machines, if you are manufacturing fra, for example, it's going to give you the texture that you want, the quality? that you want. What about employees? Do you have the, 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 the workers, uh, the, 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 health, the health and safety uh, standard implemented at your workplace? What about the government, the regulators? Do you know what they require you to do? Even, for example, KRA, when you're manufacturing uh, excisable goods, are you sure that you're going to pay uh, the, the excise duty. 
So you find that risks are so many out there, but it is you to identify which are these risks that will come and will affect me. And when you are doing that, there's something else we call the risk appetite and the risk attitude and the risk tolerance. You know, when you say that I can tolerate that, it means that that risk, even if it comes, will be able to handle it. It will not have much effect. You need to identify that in your manufacturing processes. If a sweeper didn't come to work, surely I think that we can tolerate. And it cannot be something that we close the whole manufacturing process because the sweeper didn't come uh, to clean the, the, the floor. Uh, what about um, uh, the, the, the uh, Kenya Power, uh, the, uh, the, the, the provider of power? What if they doesn't provide power? Is that something you can tolerate really? No. It is something that will make you run up, uh, up and down, looking for backups and everything. That is tolerance. And we also have risk appetite. And I like associating risk appetite with our nature. You know, um, risk appetite, it is that drive that makes us uh, want to have uh, that food. And I have appetite for food, meaning that if uh, uh, that food comes, I'll be able to eat it. There's no way um, um, uh, a, a, a grandmother would have an, an appetite for maybe chewing a maize cob or a sugar cane and she doesn't have tea. You know, th that appetite most likely will not be there. So even in risk and in business, you will have a risk appetite in which you say that I will, I'm sure I need to be there and if that risk comes, we are prepared to face it. And also there is the general way in which uh, you can have an attitude towards food, for example. You can have a good attitude, you can have a bad attitude. The same thing to risk. You can have a good attitude towards uh, risk, you can have a bad attitude towards uh, 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 risk, and all that will now drive you into coming with your, uh, the, the, the risk management policy, your risk appetite statement, and all those kind of things. And some of these things you might not have the expert team to do them. You require consultants like uh, Kibura and Associates, you require all other uh, risk professionals out there who will guide you through in how uh, uh, you, can, you can have your risk management policy and how you can execute it. So I would advise you that um, uh, uh, it is good that um, uh, uh, you have known that there are new risks that can come, that is very good, and you are in manufacturing business. It is now up to you to try and define your strategy, your objectives, and what can affect you and how you can deal with them. And in terms of uh, likelihood and impact, those are very critical. Your risk management strategy, they have to be dynamic to be able to change as times come. So in your manufacturing business, look at what can affect you. Look at the, the likelihood of uh, the, the, it happening and the impact. Uh, look at your risk at, uh, appetite. What can you ha handle? What can you tolerate? Yeah. What, are you, what do you want to achieve? And all that will make you have a good risk management uh, policy and a process. Another question here, an interesting one. It's asking, are there software systems that can help in risk mitigation? And again, the, the, the question I ask uh, this person, do you have uh, a risk management uh, process already at your place? Because when you go for a software, uh, you, are, you are bringing in this software to be able to assist you. It cannot be a software that can come and tell you what to do. For you to have a software, you will have you, you need to have identified, or rather, you'd uh, uh, gotten uh, you'd have first known what are you what, what you want to achieve, where, what are your strategic goals, where you are, where you want to go, 
all those things you need to have them in place what is your risk maturity and if i give an example of risk maturity if we have a fire that has very good frame yellow the the tongue is swinging um, right left and center it is lighting up the room it looks very nice um, a child of three years a child of two years would really uh, see that is a very good thing and they would want to touch it and once they go to touch the fire their objective was that the fire is something good and it is uh, writing well and it can do no harm but as an adult when i have a risk uh, i mean a fire that is um, the tongue is uh, is so bright i'll know the intensity there is so huge and i would the risk strategies that i'll use is to try as much as possible not to get that near fire, near that fire and that is what we call risk maturity so um this person asking about a software depending on the risk maturity levels where are you are you at the infant stage are you at the youthful stage or are you at the the, 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 the longer maturity stage i would suggest that um you analyze your, your business look at the, the risk management uh, strategies that you have and consider uh, is, um, is it the right time to have the risk software will my resources allow do i have the staff capabilities to run this software is it cost effective will it give results all those things you need to put into 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 into, into practice so i uh, i wouldn't want to uh, uh, give a software that can do risk management before even we understand what you are doing but however you know that we are having a partnership um, uh, program with tari tari solutions which provide accounting softwares that are integrated to do so many things uh, and i will give this example uh, in terms of software if you get into tari uh, there is the risk of going out of stock and when you install tari as a risk a soft, a software built into it it will show you the stocks that are remaining and uh, uh, how long maybe it will take for you to get the 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 the, the, the stock replenished to you and um, uh, you will be able from that to know that this this software is telling me or it's trying to warn me about risk stockouts then you find that that is a very good software for you to have in your business what about credit control the the, the, the tari software will tell you about the, the credit uh, days people are, have been having with your with, with your money it will tell you that this person is overdue credit credit risk somebody had asked here the software is able to do that so uh, you'll find that there are software there are softwares like tari that have tried to integrate yes it is an accounting software but it is what you, it's going towards what we are calling integrated softwares that yes it can address accounting uh, issues but built in it there are risk management uh, so, um, capabilities that are there so go out there look for software even if i recommend that if you are, if you are, if you are doing accounting and then see how it can help you in trying to do your business better remember risk management is about creation and protection of value that is according to iso 31000 that when you have risk management you are creating value and you are adding value and that uh, is also said that or the research is saying that those people who are doing risk management are doing better so much far better than, than those ones who are not doing risk management so what i call upon today is 
that when you are doing your business, whatever small it is, whatever big it is, incorporate risk management strategies and they don't have to be very sophisticated. You can start in a very simple way. You can outsource uh, those services and you will, I'm sure, you'll be able to see that you're able to wither the storms that are coming as a result of the business complexities and the issues that are coming from right, left and center and you'll be able to sail through. Another thing I want to tell uh, people is that things can never become softer. Things are getting harder. The, the, the world is becoming a grub of village. And the way things are going is that risk will be one of the core functions that organizations, and I use the word must have, else people will find themselves having good businesses, having good softwares, having good staff, but waking up in the morning and finding the business is normal. Thank you so very much.